Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Marvelous Land of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So this is the second book in the Wizard of Oz series. I read this as a buddy read with Joel Swagman, so shout out to Joel. Uh, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through it and check out some of my tabs before I share my overall thoughts and a rating. So, Dane reads... After running away from the wicked witch Mombi, Tip and his creations, Jack Pumpkinhead and the Wooden Sawhorse, try to recapture the Emerald City from General Ginger. A sequel to The Wizard of Oz, this book follows the further adventures of the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman. It also had some nice illustrations throughout as well. I'll uh, point out any that I come to. I want to start by reading the author's note because this gives some extra context on why this was written. Although Joel said in his review of the first book, basically he just ran out of money. <laughs> so he kept on writing more books, um, which fair play to him, you know. So uh, anyway, authors note, after the publication of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, I began to receive letters from children telling me of their pleasure in reading the story and asking me to write something more about the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman. At first I considered these little letters, frank and earnest though they were, in the light of pretty compliments, but the letters continued to come during succeeding months and even years. Finally, I promised one little girl, who made a long journey to see me and prefer her request, and she is a Dorothy, by the way, that when a thousand little girls had written me a thousand little letters asking for another story of the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman, I would write the book. Either little Dorothy was a fairy in disguise and waved her magic wand, or the success of the stage production of The Wizard of Oz made new friends for the story, for the thousand letters reached their destination long since, and many more followed them. And now, although pleading guilty to a long delay, I have kept my promise in this book. L. Frank Baum, Chicago, June 1904. So the first thing I tabbed out, and this is very me, because you know how I like to spot the ejaculations. Ha! <laughs> Ejaculated Mombi, giving a sort of grunt. That rascally boy has been playing tricks again. All right, calm down with your ejaculations. And we get a reference to the wonderful Wizard of Oz building uh, the Emerald City, and everything there is of a green colour, just as everything in this country of the Gillikins is of a purple colour. And I guess this is an example of something that Joel mentioned, of like, Baum kind of retconning stuff, um, and which is when you like, in a future instalment, you change the past of the story, you know? And um, yeah, because in the original book, everything in, in Oz, uh, or the city or whatever, Emerald City, wasn't Emerald, it's just that Oz made everybody wear glasses with green lenses. So Jack goes, Dear me, I'm getting confused with all this history. Who is the Scarecrow? Another friend of Dorothy's, replied Tip. And isn't a friend of Dorothy used as like a euphemism for being gay? Maybe I imagine that, I don't know. I'm sure I've heard that before though. Got this interesting little picture there. And then, um, so uh, Jack Pumpkinhead meets the, um, the Scarecrow. And we get like, where on earth did you come from and how do you happen to be alive? I beg your majesty's pardon, returned the pumpkin head, but I do not understand you. What don't you understand, asked the scarecrow. Why, I don't understand your language. You see, I come from the country of the Gillikin, so that I am a foreigner. Ah, to be sure, exclaimed the scarecrow. I myself speak the language of the munchkins, which is also the language of the Emerald City. But you, I suppose, speak the language of the pumpkin heads. Exactly so, your majesty, replied the other, bowing. So it will be impossible for us to understand one another. And I was like, well, that's a major plot hole because they're having a conversation as if they can. Um, and then later on, the translator comes along and we get a... Uh, Are you quite certain you understand the languages of both the Gillikins and the Munchkins? Quite certain, your majesty, said Jellia Jam, trying hard not to laugh in the face of royalty. Then how is it that I seem to understand them myself, inquired the Scarecrow. Because they are one and the same, declared the girl, now laughing merrily. Does not your majesty know that in all the land of Oz but one language is spoken? That makes a lot of sense. We get a lot of like casual sexism in this as well because there's basically an army of girls in it. Um, so we get, for example, I command the army of revolt in this war, answered the general with unnecessary sharpness. Oh, he again exclaimed, I didn't know there was a war. You were not supposed to know it, she returned, for we have kept it secret, and considering that our army is composed entirely of girls, she added with some pride, it is surely a remarkable thing that our revolt is not yet discovered. I will say though, we do get kind of transgender rep in this, because later on we discover a male character is actually like a transmogrified female princess character, uh, and they chain, change her back. And uh, again, just this sort of very stereotypical view of what the girls want, so... Uh, why, why are they at war? Because the Emerald City has been ruled by men long enough, for one reason, said the girl. Moreover, the city glitters with beautiful gems, which might far better be used for rings, bracelets and necklaces. And there is enough money in the King's treasury to buy every girl in our army a dozen new gowns. We do get a fun little pun here, so, um... Surrender, 
echoed the man astounded. Why, it's impossible, it's against the law. I never heard of such a thing in my life. Still, you must surrender, exclaimed the general fiercely. We are revolting. You don't look it, said the guardian. We get a reference to care once killed a cat, which I thought the phrase was curiosity killed the cat, but who knows. That's it, Nick Chopper. Nick Chopper is the uh, actual name of the Tin Woodman. And they start calling him Nick, and it just threw me for some reason, because I'm so used to him being the Tin Woodman, you know? We get a, dear me, ejaculated the pumpkin head, staring somewhat intently. I bet he was, dirty mare. And then another bit of casual sexism, uh, hmm, said the scarecrow thoughtfully. If it is such hard work as you say, how did the women manage it so easily? And then to be fair, the man says, I really do not know. Perhaps the women are made of cast iron. Great little bit of um, wisdom from the Tim Woodman. He says, why, when it comes to law, I have nothing to say, for laws were never meant to be understood, and it is foolish to make the attempt. And uh, the Tin Woodman, they take his leg off uh, at one point to basically fix another character. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then they give him a mahogany, uh, mahogany leg from a table and we go It seems strange said he as he watched the Tin Woodman work that my left leg should be the most elegant and substantial part of me That proves you are unusual returned the scarecrow And I am convinced that the only people worthy of consideration in this world are the unusual ones For the common folks are like the leaves of a tree and live and die unnoticed Bit deep for a children's book, you know I just like this great line here um, so, uh, well, I'll read these two, par the two paragraphs because they're not too long and the, the first paragraph explains why the second paragraph's happening. The Tin Woodman appeared last. He also had been to the courtyard where he had cut four great spreading leaves from a huge palm tree that was the pride of all the inhabitants of the Emerald City. My dear Nick, exclaimed the Scarecrow, seeing what his friend had done. You have been guilty of the greatest crime any person can commit in the Emerald City. If I remember rightly, the penalty for chopping leaves from the royal palm tree is to be killed seven times and afterwards imprisoned for life. I just like that, killed seven times and then imprisoned for life line. Great. And the Scarecrow is talking about maths because they have to count up to, uh, I think it's 17. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, they need to count to 17 by twos. Um, and we get, it isn't a question of education, returned the insect, it's merely a question of mathematics. I've seen the professor work out lots of sums on the blackboard, and he claimed anything could be done with X's and Y's and A's and such things by mixing them up with plenty of pluses and minuses and equals and so forth. But he never said anything, so far as I can remember, about counting up to the odd number of 17 by the even numbers of twos. Stop, stop, cried the pumpkin head, you're making my head ache. And mine, added the scarecrow. Your mathematics seem to me very like a bottle of mixed pickles. The more you fish for what you want, the less chance you have of getting it. And uh, we get the moral here at the end, the end of the story. So, uh, I think, said the little queen, smiling, that your friend must be the richest man in all the world. I am, returned the scarecrow, but not on account of my money, because he's stuffed full of dollar bills. For I consider brains to be far superior to money in every way. You may have noticed that if one has money without brains, he cannot use it to advantage. But if one has brains without money, they will enable him to live comfortably to the end of his days. At the same time, declared the Tin Woodman, you must acknowledge that a good heart is a thing that brains cannot create and that money cannot buy. Perhaps after all, it is I who am the richest man in all the world. You're both rich, my friends, said Ozma gently, and your riches are the only riches worth having, the riches of content. So yeah, I'm not sure why the Land of Oz uses dollar bills, and they have like a, a $1,000 bill, which I'm pretty sure doesn't exist even now. And back then in like 1904, $1,000, like you could buy a house with that, you know? So yeah, L. Frank Baum, uh, The Marvelous Land of Oz. I did quite like the little gender change towards the end. I, I thought that almost made up for all of the like stereotypical, you know, girls should be long in the kitchen stuff. Um, obviously a few little bits that are problematic and um, I guess if you're reading it to kids these days you'd probably want to discuss with them and, and you know talk about why um, but it's still a pretty good little you know alternative to the old fairy tales I gave this like a four out of five did enjoy it and I'm looking forward to reading the next book which I believe is Ozma of Oz I'm not entirely sure um, but I'll be reading that with Joel soon here are some more illustrations so there we have it, that's what I made of The Marvelous Land of Oz by L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.